Alrighty guys, well uh, today's adventure is I am setting up the incubator um, so we can kind of set its humidity and get its temperature raised up so I can hatch some black copper marmon eggs. Um, for those of you who know me know that um, they kind of slowly became one of my favorite birds and um, they've kind of been the foundation of a lot of my projects as far as egg colors go, as far as um, creating olive eggers and, um, and even crossing back to black copper marins to get different shades of olives. Um, so that's kind of been my experiment. Uh, someday I hope to become like a black copper marin breeder um, for this area. So kind of getting some of the foundation work. Um, backstory is I tried to hatch black copper marin eggs once and it was not successful. Um, I actually had them in the incubator with some silver reds and um, all my silver reds hatched and none of my black copper marins hatched. So um, after some more research on incubating, um, I'm changing some stuff up and we're going to do a little experiment and I'm going to let you guys follow along and <laughs> you can decide by the end of the video if you want to emulate what I did or um, even in the comments share uh, your experience and help me grow. Um, and hashing eggs as well. Um, so some key difference, I'm going to get the black copper marin eggs here. So these are the black copper marin eggs. Uh, you can, they're just very, very dark eggs. They have that chocolate color. Um, some of these even have like a very heavy bloom and have that purplish tint. Um, man, do I love these. These are beautiful, beautiful eggs. Um, but since they're so dark, I've, I've read on the internet and, uh, through uh, some people who have a lot more experience than I do um, that it's harder to lose moisture um, in those eggs because uh, the dark pigment clogs the pores. So um, they actually recommend incubating these eggs um, in a lower humidity temperature. So I'm going to be shooting uh, maybe in the low 40% um, for the first 18 days and then after 18 days after they go into lockdown um, I might bump it up into the low 50s and um, from what I've read what's really important is too high of humidity can actually stop um, the air cell from growing and then the chick can get too big and uh, when that chick uh, goes to pip and uh, you know starts to break out of that egg that air cell is a, that a nice big robust air cell is a uh, a very key feature of a successful hatch and a success, successful um, breaking out of the egg but again I'm no expert this is just uh, what I'm reading and, and how I'm growing so I will let you guys follow along um, another key feature that's different about this is I went up to um, a place in Ohio called Crosshatch Farms. It's about um, an hour and a half uh, away from me. And I picked up eggs right off her farm um, and they weren't shipped to me. And a lot of times with shipped eggs, um, that air cell can get dismantled and cause you a little bit of trouble. Um, but so that's a little bit of what I'm doing different and uh, I'm excited for you guys to journey along. Um, another tip I've learned along the way, um, especially with shipped eggs, these eggs aren't shipped, um, but if, if they were, it'd be even crucially more important to let them rest with the fat end up. So that fat end is where the air cell's at. So if it gets dismantled from left to right, um, that gives it a chance to uh, come back up into position um, as you let it rest. Um, I've heard people say 12 hours, 24 hours, even up to 48 hours, um, just depending on the freshness of the egg. But um, So that's a big quick tip. Um, another thing is I did switch uh, incubators within the last year. Um, I got something called a Hubba Bader 1588. It's actually right behind me right here. And uh, the big benefit to that was it has an upright egg turner. So the whole hatching process, my egg stays upright and when it turns, you know, that air cell is still remaining vertical. And then the way it turns, it is going left to right where uh, my other incubator, which I really like, is a, uh, a Nurture Right 360, um, but that's a horizontal one. 
and then the turner rolls the egg. Um, so the the big uh, the big benefit of that the upright one is that that air cell can stay up on the fat end, and you can let it rest through the whole process this way, which um, might be you know you might be better off with something like that. Hey, isn't that a gorgeous egg? it is time for lockdown we are on day 18 um, so that means i need to bump up the humidity on the incubator and uh, for the first 18 days the huffabator 1588 did a really good job at maintaining that low 40 percent i probably added water maybe five times just a little bit to keep it in those low 40s um, i had one time i added a little too much water and it shot up in the 50s and um I, I pretty quickly caught on to that and readjusted and got it back down in the low 40s. So um, I think the experiment should be a good experiment. And um, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the egg turner out um, and I'm just going to rest the eggs on the incubator. It has a little floor uh, uh, for the chicks um, that they, it's like a little insert uh, for them. And um, I think I'm trying to think anything else. A big thing is, uh, you know, as they start hatching, you don't want to be um, lifting up the incubator, taking off the lid when you have any pipping or them starting to uh, um, kind of zip around uh, the egg to hatch. Um, that big change in temperature and humidity from lifting the lid can sometimes just kind of vacuum seal that chick in and make it really hard for them to get out. Um, so try your best not to do that. Um, the chicks are, are good in there for, for a good while. You know, even think of a chick you get in the mail, you know, it's been feeding on that, that yolk and um, they, can, they can be in the mail for three days um, and sometimes even longer. Um, so it's fine to keep them in that incubator for a little while. It's, it's, it's not the, the end of the world if, if the chicks are running around knocking into the eggs a little, eggs a little bit, but all right uh, thank you for coming along the journey and i hope the results are good in the next couple of days uh, i always get a little bit of giddy about hatching eggs it's just um, exciting to bring life in the world and um, just be a part of the miracle of life all right Alrighty, I'm here in the brood room. I got the, the chicks all cozy under a nice heat lamp and uh, on some wood shavings. Um, so total, that would be, I had, I, I had, let's see, I had 15 eggs and we had four of them hatch. Uh, so that's, I don't know, I'm, I'm not good at math. That's probably around 34, 36% a success rate. Um, I had four completely developed eggs, so when I when I cracked them open, once I realized they were they weren't going to be successful, um, I had four developed uh, chicks that were uh, that, that died in the egg. Um, so it's a success that I was getting them that far, but I'm still um, that's still unfortunate, it's still not good, it's still, still something I can improve. Um, I've heard a good success rate with marins. Marins are, um, they're harder to hatch and there's lots of theories uh, to why that is. Um, but 50% um, or higher t tends to be, a, hey, that's a successful hatch, even though a higher hatch rate you should expect out of other breeds. Um, so 
I'm still gonna keep working on it. Um, it's better than my last time, so I'm improving uh, with my parameter changes. And um, a part of these videos, I want to be, you know, you guys learning from my mistakes and learning from my journey. And then uh, for those who uh, are further along in the journey than me, you know, you can uh, mention in the comments or message me, you know, what you've had good luck with and we can learn from each other. And um, I still have high hopes to continue doing this with Marins because they're a beautiful bird. And uh, for any egg collar project, they're a very, very useful tool to get a spectrum of collars in your basket. And um, I want people, when they look at a local food system, to, to also see our uniqueness and for um, productivity to not be the only standard something's judged by as being uh, something beautiful and worthwhile. So um, I, I continue to want to work with this breed even though it's a little bit tougher to hatch and um, thank you guys for watching.